I call that lift as you lead. Oh, I like right? that. So that you're making this headway and you're either taking from the people that have done it before you or you're going, that sort of works, but it works for them. I'm different. I'm going this way and let's see what I got. And and as you do that, you pass on a little bit of the knowledge from both and you're still in the lead. You bring others with you. You lift as you lead. Welcome to the People Powered Solutions Podcast. In this show, you'll gain expert advice and tips on building a thriving workplace culture with happy employees. I'm your host, Lorianne Duguay, and I'm thrilled to be spending this time with you today. Hello, <laughs> listeners, and welcome to another episode of People Powered Solutions. You'll notice there were some giggles happening at the onset of the show. It's because our guest and I are already having fun. So we thought we would click that record button and bring you in on some of this action. And although I don't normally read bios, I prefer my guests to kind of introduce themselves. I honestly think that today's guest deserves all the accolades and I feel like he would sell himself short if he was doing it himself. So here we go, folks. Today, we welcome Dr. Wayne Purnell, who also goes by Dr. P. That's that's how I like to call him. He's the Exponential Success Coach. He's an international speaker with not one, but two TED talk, TEDx Talks, one which has 2 million views, you know, just a few views. He's an elite mind state coach, and he's been helping managers and leaders across organizations to boost their profitability and productivity for the past 40 years. Yes, four whole decades. He's an international number one best selling author, podcaster, blogger, and documentary filmmaker. There's so much more I'm sure he'll tell us. Let's welcome Dr. P. Dr. Wayne Purnell. Welcome to the show. Hooray. No, it's it's so exciting to be here with you. This is, you know, there's so much that we that we share. Part of the laughter ahead of time was just the just building on each other. And I think that. It's it's our duty in some ways to be that good human that sparks the light that does lift others. And when we connect, you've been on my podcast. And when we connect, it's just kind of fire. So glad to be here. Very, very glad to be here. I like how you define it as fire. I define it as just crazy fun, silliness, riffing, just having a blast. <laughs> There's all of that. It's all true. of that. So before we deep dive into some of the wonderful work that you've done and that you continue to do with organizations, Dr. P, can you share with our audience how Dr. Wayne Purnell got to doing what Dr. Wayne Purnell does? I can. So the Dr. P part came from when I was an art docent at my at my son's elementary school and and the teacher basically said, you know, we put your name on the board. I'm like, oh, it can't be Dr. Purnell. Like that's that's always been my dad. And that's so formal. Why don't they just call me Wayne? And the teacher was like, oh, they can't call you Wayne. That's, you know, they, they just can't. And so somehow back and forth, it was like, well, how about just Dr. P? And that became a thing because every time I'd come onto campus, I would hear these little beautiful squeaky voices. Oh, it's Dr. P. It's Dr. P. And it was like, oh my God, melt my heart. That is adorable. <laughs> and, you know, I took that into magic. So it became, I became uh, Dr. P on stage as well. And so I was known as that and it's just stuck. And I'll tell you the first time that I got really freaked out was when I was traveling for a corporate event and it's like zero dark 30 at an airport. And I hear Dr. P, Dr. P, is that you? And I'm like, oh my God, is it one of the, the kindergartners that's grown up or whatever? He's like, I thought it was you. I saw you at the Magic Cabaret, you know, the other night. I'm like, oh. Okay. They grow really fast, but it sounds Not like that, that fast. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how I got my moniker. That's how I, I've become known as Dr. P. And it's just, for me, it's a, it's endearing and, and it's not Dr. Purnell, which like my dad was always so formal that it, it seemed like doctor was his first name. So, right. you know, Dr. P, it's really fast and easy. And how I got to do what I'm doing is, uh, you, you know, in grade school, I think it might have been middle school, actually, they brought in, we had, at least in the United States, we have, at least where I grew up, 
career exploration day. And that meant that they would bring in these amazing people, nurses and attorneys. And here, there, here was this guy that was dressed in a very stereotypically bad tweed jacket with the elbow patches. Oh, my God. Was it brown? Of course it was brown. And he was it. leaning back on the desk and pulling at his throat. I still remember this. And, it, and he was pulling at something that he had on his neck. And he just spoke the entire time doing this. And beyond his <laughs> outward appearance, what struck me was here's a man who connects via empathy to other humans and helps them by talking with them and i'm like that's the thing mm. all of a sudden that was like that, he does psychology like that's what it's called psychology and so that was the path and so very oddly uniquely i knew in the seventh grade 12 years old what my path was supposed to be awesome and, it's it's amazing and i went through high school and i even got to lead a few classes because of my interest and my advanced interest i'd taken college courses in high school so the high school psych teacher allowed me to to teach went to college went to grad school got my doctorate and realized that's not the path i want <laughs> it's not like it was like the path of traditional clinical psychology, let's begin with your mother and your father. <laughs> and not all psychology is that, but it just, it it started to crush me. I'm like, look, people, you've gotten to this age, whatever age it is, where you are right now is as old as you've ever been, which means, right? I'll say that again. You're as old as you've I ever know. been. I like it, but it's a bit of an awe-inspiring moment to realize uh, to, in this moment, I'm as old as all I've ever been. Right? So something got you here. And so let's build on those strengths. Let's find the strengths that have gotten you here and leverage those. We don't always have to go back to what were the early traumas, what what. If we anchor back there, we're we're sticking ourselves there. So yes, understand them. Yes, acknowledge that they existed. And also acknowledge yourself for the strength and resilience that you have that got you here. Yes, 100% yes. Because it's, it's, it's about observing them, acknowledging, but not letting them tether you. Correct. And really not life is them. all about choices, right? You can, you've got two choices in that moment. You can let them tether you. Exactly. Or you can let them fuel you into greatness. It's exactly right. And I want to come back to, to choice because at some point we'll talk about the books behind yes. me. and Maybe the artwork, just have to throw that one. The in. artwork behind me is are my, book, my books and, and other such. So I'm doing traditional couples therapy and the we finished up. The guy calls me and he goes, hey, you've really helped me and my wife. And I'm like, what a great call. Maybe this isn't so bad after all, like traditional couples work. That's fabulous. And he's like, no, no, I'm not calling about that. I'm like, I don't get it. What? Like you just called, you gave me a compliment. What's up? He goes, that thing you did with me and my wife. I'm like, yeah. He goes, that thing you did, you know, you helped us be able to talk better together. Can you do that with me and my vice president? And I had not realized really like the big picture hadn't really dawned on me that the man sitting in front of me with his wife was actually the president of a major company in South San Francisco. Wow. And he invited me to come in and work with him and his vice president to work on communication strategies, which we did. I built strategies around how do you communicate? How do you communicate when you don't agree what are the working agreements that you have as you come to work and come with each other, as in how do you acknowledge and support each other, even if you don't agree? And when you do agree, how do you acknowledge and, and bring that out? I had a bit of business behind me at that point, and this certainly helped me to dive in deeper because we worked on values. I always start with values, go values, vision, vitality. And the values help to create the vision 
the vision helped to create a strategy. All through it, the theme and the thread is communication. And around the fourth time that I showed up, people that I hadn't even worked with, the line staff, were out front, like applauding my arrival. You're Thank here. You. You're <laughs> here. Thank you for being here. And I'm like, I don't even know you guys. Like, what's going on? They point to the top floor and they like, they are talking so much better together. They're, they're, they're giving us direction. They have a direction. They're giving us direction. We know what our jobs are now. Thank you for being here. And with that, I started focus groups, line staff, middle management, senior management, building bridges, and doing organization development before that was even a thing. It wasn't like wind back the clock 40 years. It wasn't really a thing. Oh, no, no, so, because you think about even that at that time, if you had a job, you had a job, you'd be grateful because there weren't a lot out there economy wise there. you So you would just stick with that job regardless yeah. of how you were treated or anything. You had to be grateful you had a job and you just stuck around and put up with and, anything. And the research on industrial organizational psych at that point was, well, if you put a ribbon on a, a vent, you will demonstrate that air is flowing and that's how you will demonstrate as a business owner that you care about your employees. You, you've got good airflow. It's, yeah. This is yes. really horrible. Oh, so. I love ev- so many elements and for folks who listen to the show regularly, they know that I'm extremely passionate about the importance of communication, the importance of uh, being very clear on expectations and helping people understand and to your point about values and vision and helping them connect to that vision and communication is is a key part of that. It's one thing to to develop these, you know, foundational tenets, but then to not communicate them, then you're no further ahead, right? So how do you communicate them effectively and you help your team members embody them? I like how you kind of tripped into the field, but are now killing it in the field. So thank you for that. Well, (laughs) this, I mean, everything that I'm doing is sort of me accidentally following my passion. It's uh, right. It was like, Oh, this I feel like following the, the universe's lead. I, yeah. I had this moment, I was listening to a Taylor Swift song and it was, there's this one lyric in it that I make the moves up as I go. That's what they don't know. The, 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 and I'm like, wow, that kind of resonates with me because on some fronts in this entrepreneurial journey, I kind of make the moves up as I go, like you say, and I'm following the universe's lead and they don't know. No one's the wiser, but it seems to be working. And I, when it works, you do more of it. When it doesn't, you do a bit less of that, right? You avoid exactly. the future. Yeah. And that's the whole thing, you know, pretty much 100% of the, of the population has some form of imposter phenomenon at some point or other. And I think it's just really important to know that sometimes you stumble into something and you go, I'm actually kind of good at this, but nobody knows what I don't know. And what if I'm not good at this? Yeah. And you just keep going and you yeah. use it as a learning experience. And I mean, I I ended up working with Schwab and 3Com and Whole Foods Market and AAA and on and on and on. And a lot, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of solo business owners. And it's just, it's amazing because as you said, the theme is communication. The theme is clarity. And it's one thing for you to know what your values are, but if you're not communicating those, they're kind of a hallucination. That's it. Um, (laughs) It's like, you've got to, you, you know what they are, but you're the only one that can see it. Mm, what does that mean? Right. So you've got to be stepping in as a leader. And I believe that we are all leaders. So yeah. get clear about your own values. Get clear about talking about them. What do you value? What's in for your life? And what are you no longer tolerating? And yeah. also, how are you living? How are you showing up and demonstrating that you have these values and that you are appreciating some things and you're no longer tolerating other things? Absolutely. 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 And and back to your imposter kind of syndrome, I think to clarify, I feel like that you make the moves up as you go is more of an innovation thing. Like it's about iteration. It's about trying things out too, right? Not definitely not necessarily avoiding something because it's so foreign to you, i.e. for me, social media and all that beautiful social media content generation and how to do it 
well and what takes and what doesn't. That's so important to me, but I've been learning as I go and yeah. I've been able to. And then from that, as you learn, you share it with others that to try and maybe abbreviate their learning curve. Cause I really feel like, you know what, you're just getting started here. Here's like the 10 things that I wish I knew before, <laughs> before, right? Just to pay it forward and abbreviate their kind of. And I, I call that lift as you lead. Oh, I like right? that. So that you're making this headway and you're either taking from the people that have done it before you, or you're going, that sort of works, but it works for them. I'm different. I'm going this way and let's see what I got. And, and as you do that, you pass on a little bit of the knowledge from both and you're still in the lead. You bring others with you. You lift as you lead. Lift as you lead. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm coining that one. You've said a bunch of wonderful stuff today, but I'm quoting that one as a nugget of wisdom, like that first nice, beautiful nugget of wisdom for our listeners. Thank you for sharing how you got to doing what you do. You're extremely passionate. Your passion literally shines through in all of your stories. You're a great storyteller. I do have some questions I want to ask you, but first, your artwork behind, there's a wave. There is, yes, shall you, the, the all wave. Right. So. Yes. What you see behind me, I shall describe it for those that are listening only and yes. not viewing. Thank you. There is a wave in the style of the wave. It has a sword, a katana coming out of it. And it is actually the artwork for my podcast called One Sharp Sword Cutting Through to What Matters Most. The mm -hmm. katana is being offered by the wave. For me, I had this artwork done specifically. The wave represents a kind of an eternity. We are all eternally part of a process and we are connected. And the katana represents the power, actually, because the thing about, so I, I'm a martial artist. I have a fourth degree black belt in uh bushido Casey is, didn't have enough titles with everything else happening okay we're adding yeah. that to the bucket okay. so right so that's not in my bio necessarily <laughs> i used to i taught for 27 years through parks and rec because i didn't want to make it a thing it should be accessible to everybody so that's a side thing katana the thing about a katana it's got to be sharp it's got to be deadly and it must never be drawn unless you intend to use it so the the whole thing about the sword is you know that there's power there and you never ever have to draw it there's always a choice there's always a choice so it's wow. and and then in terms of the podcast title one sharp sword cutting through to what matters most the idea is that one sharp sword is much more powerful than 10,000 dull knives. Mm. For those Not who are like, listening only, Dr. P is now gesturing, drawing uh, the, the- One cut and then done, yeah. right? Okay. And well, thank you. you. We heard the word power a lot, which I'm a big fan of, People Powered Solutions. Notice the book. Now let's go to the next to this beautiful artwork he just described. There is a poster with his three books on it. And one of which is Chasing Your Power, I believe. Choosing Your Power. See, I, my eyesight's not that great. So well, let's then, go with Choosing yeah. Your Power, Lori. <laughs> awesome. How would you tell us what this, what this book's about? Thank you. It's so I have props. There's there three. <laughs> There are three of the five books that I have out there. I have a couple that I'm actually working on, and we'll talk about those, I hope, as well. Choosing Your Power, I wrote this, um, gosh, it's been about eight or 10 years at this point, and I wrote it as a result of working with a few hundred, it was about 300 women, and recognizing that there was a problem that was often shared by women, and that that it might make some sense if a man wrote a book that said, we need your voice. We need you to stand up. We need your presence. We need your voice. And you deserve to be here, but it's not up to me as a guy saying you deserve it because that's demeaning in itself. And so 
to say, look, this is how to share your voice. If we're if we're in a grocery store aisle and I reach for the green beans at the same time that you're reaching for the green beans, why is it that you as a woman say, excuse me, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, stop apologizing for showing up. We're in a hotel lobby or a business lobby and the elevator doors open and out march the dudes and then the women come out and they're all tight with their shoulders tight and and they're like oh sorry it's like you just made space for me to get into the elevator what are you apologizing for like d- don't apologize in the world stop it and so so the the book goes through various ways of saying please please show up i have the chapter three is called permission granted and it's like you have permission to be in the world you don't need anybody's permission permission granted and i have some that's like not good enough and then i have some things about communication like my top three watchwords i have 10 watchwords listed in the communication why but and should are the top three to just eliminate yes thank you you're welcome. <laughs> no, because I, I, I've had that same conversation with some of my coaching clients who say, oh, I need to be and, and kind of and ironically, they're all women as well. They always say, I need to be more assertive, more assertive. I need, you know, I feel like I'm not I'm talking, but nobody's really listening. And I kind of wonder if it might be something that I'm doing. And I'm, I'm like, okay, tell me a story. And then they'll tell me a story. And I'm like, okay, now repeat that story and eliminate words like should, could, would, you know, why it, it makes you sound hesitant. It makes you sound like you're passive, very passive and operating after the listener it's apologetic exactly own that conversation yeah so why is is i make when people ask me a why question i will very often make them rephrase the question okay and you're gonna go why would you do that and the (laughs) (laughs) right why demands a because response and if i am in a place of justification it's one down so why to me is the argument starter why would you do that why were you why why were you late it's like i can't do anything about being late why didn't you call i can call in the future if that's a working agreement you expect of me yes right why what so why is nothing but blameful nothing but blameful in conflict resolution when we're training like mediators or just managers in general, when they're mediating conflict or just helping navigate that more difficult conversation between two employees, one of the things I tell them is avoid the why, because they're immediately going to fall into defensive mode. It is a blaming, it is a blaming conversation starter. It's completely blaming. And what we do is we change that for what or how. Like it. What was it that brought you to this decision? How can we move forward from here? What is it you're expecting out of the way we're engaging right now? Those are like, when you stay curious in that way, it's great. The only time to use why, and it's funny because this book came out right around the time Simon Sinek's TEDx came, TED talk came out and he goes, why five times or something? I go, why why four times? I actually write about doing why four times. So it's like, it's interesting, you know, (laughs) it's, it's there that you can ask yourself and why is that important to me? Yes, And that's the place where you want a personal because you're not justifying it to anybody but you. And why is that important to you? And that, why is that important to you? When you're doing self-exploration, the why does matter. Yeah. When Self-reflection looking, allows yeah. for whys. I get that. I like that. When you're doing it to someone else, it's an imposition and it keeps them down. The but simply negates everything that's come before. And it's it's kind of like, you know, Laurie, you've got a you've got a gray jacket on, but I have a flowered shirt, and it makes it sound like my flowered shirt is better yeah. somehow. Um, or it adds an excuse and it minimizes the previous comment, right? So exactly. So Wayne, you're doing a re- I really loved how you did that report, but right there, yeah. you've just eliminated the effectiveness of that first comment. So what do you change? What do you add? What do you put in there instead? Instead of the but? So I actually and it's and, and it's inclusive. Yes. So you're wearing a, a gray jacket and I have a flowered shirt. 
you did a, a pretty good job on that report. And I, next time I would love to see this and this included. Yes. It doesn't negate what comes before. It actually is a, is a plus supplementary, one. Supplementary, yes. And, yes. But word of warning, caution for our listeners, if it is about constructive feedback, stay away from the that that dreaded feedback sandwich because oh, yeah. there's conditioning that comes along with that. And I do have a whole video on that if you want to check out my YouTube. But mm-hmm. make sure that if you are going to be delivering the more constructive, you want to mix up the comments or the statements that precede the end and follow the end. Don't always put the negative first and then the positive or vice versa. Make sure you mix it up so that there's no conditioning that they're always waiting for that that end will be followed by a negative <laughs> just as an FYI. In that's right. When it's the the feedback sandwich was big in the 1980s, and since that time, people have been recovering. The one thing that I'm a, a fan of is to be very clear: we're about to have a counseling. There were some expectations that were not met. Like that's working agreements. I'm about to give you information. You might not actually like it. It's important that it comes out of my mouth. It's important you hear it. And and it's not like, hey, I've got some feedback for you. Would you like it? No. <laughs> no, because that's that's just kind of a almost smarmy way of, of giving people bad information. Yeah. Yeah. So you okay, want to so- be clear. So why but should? Should. Should. Yeah. So you don't want to, like Fritz Perls, this has been attributed to all kinds of people. Fritz Perls was the first to say it in the late 1950s should shoulds are s poop and there's no reason to should on yourself or anyone else i've heard that before and i thought it was brilliant so a lot of people have attributed it to various major speakers it's like no it came out of gestalt psychology first and that was back in the 1950s and you can look up fritz pearls if you want the whole idea is you can't should have done something now you should have called. I can't should have. Let's create working agreements for the future. Yeah. Well, you should have you should have brought green beans instead of potato salad. I can't should have brought anything other than what I brought. If you needed <laughs> something different for the table, like next time we're creating a table potluck, maybe we could have better communication. Yeah. Right? So you use that to build instead of score keep. Oh, I like it. So I like that. Strive for building instead of scorekeeping, because that's often where a lot of that conflict, the resentment yeah. is, right? And it's, oh, that you let it fester. And, 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 and perfect example in our household, sometimes I will not address certain situations. And then suddenly someone leaves the lid off a peanut butter jar. And that is what gets me off the handle. And I'm losing it because of the lid. And the kids are like, mom. It's a peanut butter jar. You need to get over it. But what is that really about? A series of other events that I chose to sweep under the carpet, you know, because pick your battles. But if you're going to go with that route, you need to make sure that you're also releasing any resentment that might have ensued from not picking that battle. (laughs) That's that's exactly right. (laughs) And that translates to the workplace too. (laughs) Yeah, you have conversations where, hey, this is is information for y'all, you know, (laughs) There have been several things that have sort of gotten to me. I want to share them so that we don't have a you know, a threshold event. <laughs> <laughs> one of the That's things I, I want to offer this nugget, because one of the things that I talk about in choosing your power is the idea of relationships. And, you know, there's there are there are givers out there that are so much in the give that they end up smothering. And they don't know why the other person is pushing back so hard. And it's because, look, we operate in this space where we have our own personal spaces. We have our own. And if you're the person that cares so much and you're just going to adjust this for them and make that right for them and do this for them and do that for them and do this, there's no room for them. So you will get pushback. And, you know, there are the most caring people that can't understand why they can't connect with people. It's because you're trying to over connect or over control. The idea of relationship, by the way, if you, if you break it down into its Latin roots, do you know this? No, I'm, 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 I'm 
eagerly waiting for you to enlighten me. Take notes. Here you go. Okay, so the, <laughs> <laughs> the Latin roots, the Latin roots of relationship, relationship. Re is if you redo something, you're doing it again. Yeah. So re yeah. is again. Lation is the way things come together or interact. And ship is a giant boat. No, ship I is... was just about to say, isn't that a boat? <laughs> it's a After boat, not size, a boat. <laughs> the boat becomes a ship. <laughs> so it's a depends on where you're from, uh, where you're from, whether it's I know a where boat you're going, or you're gonna, boat. I knew you were gonna go there with, yes. with the Canadian accent. So so ship okay, is the state of yes, right okay. township, fellowship. Sure. Right. So relationship is the state of coming together again and where relationships go badly is when we think that a relationship is stagnant oh it's just her she's always been that way oh he's always been that way uh, you know I, and and what happens is a good relationship is where two solid well-adjusted human beings are able to come together in integrate come apart grow come together support each other come apart and this growth happens in an upward supportive way where things go badly is where one person grows and the other person's like well what do you think you're doing weren't we good together just this way as we were yeah <laughs> yeah or, or the other is hey we're both growing but we're we're growing separately so maybe it's just time you know yeah. um when it goes badly is where one grows and the other is trying to drag the other down. Come back to where you were. Or weren't you happy? And then, and then two more, two more things. One is when men will say things like, she's not the woman I married. It's like, you've been married how long? Like, you know, 10, 20 years. It's like, okay, well, no wonder. Like, did you really want her to be... She was 20 years ago. Are you the person that you were 20 years ago? No. She yeah. says, he's not the man I thought he'd become. Really? You married him to mold him? Is that right? So, <laughs> to what you might one day be. <laughs> so conversations about who you are, what you value, and recognize that your value over time, what you value, your values over time will change. They evolve. You're not who you were in your 20s you're not who you were in your 30s like what what got you here is is great and where you're going is going to require a different set of values yeah yeah consistent pivoting in, yeah. in growth course. yeah growth and that's what i was hearing from a lot of, of what you've just shared is that growth mindset and again that translates to the workplace right what was working with an employee to keep them motivating in the first couple of years is likely not going to work or be as effective 10, 15 years down the road. You need to consistently mix things up and to really consistently take the time to understand, to your point, what is it you value? Because that's likely also evolved in time, right? So, so we need to understand what it is they value and then make sure that they're structuring their work environment to, to really kind of fuel that whatever it is, element. I'm going to plus one that, Lori, because in the work environment, you recognize that there's a relationship that the team member has to the work and a relationship that the team member has to the other team members and a relationship that the team member has to you. And, and that over time, that person as an individual is changing. They're growing. What matters to them is changing. And for some, it's please give me more challenge. For others, it's please lighten up. And you won't know as a leader, it's your job as a leader to lead correctly is to understand what is it that each team member requires in order to be, to be seen and to know that the work that they do, that yeah. they're doing is valuable. Mm -hmm. And so often we miss that piece. As leaders, we miss the piece of reminding them that even though you're working on this report that's internal, this affects our end user who gets XYZ out of us as a company. And this report is vital. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Amazing nuggets of wisdom. We started off with our, you know, is it lead and lift or lift and lead? Lift as you lead. Lift as you lead. 
see Lori, my note taking needs to improve clearly. And then you shared uh, some powerful insight relevant to words, using words and try to avoid essentially, or even eliminate, eliminate altogether the whys, mm -hmm. the buts and the shoulds just now some really powerful insight relevant to relationships and I'm going to bed that much more smart tonight, just as an FYI, because I had no, no idea, broke it up, what the Latin roots of that word was. And so thank you for sharing that, but also with this advice on how different perspectives and understanding and appreciating the value of growing alongside each other. And to that, that more often than not, some of the issues at play when there is a breakdown in a relationship, be it at work or in your personal life, it may be related to one kind of veering into a growth trajectory while the other is maybe not wanting to grow at that same rate or even grow at all. And that there's some, some different resentment happening or different ideas in terms of what they qualify as growth and whether or not the, the value they attach to growth in general might be at play. So further insight into if you are experiencing a breakdown in relationships to try and reframe it through that lens to see whether or not some of these issues might actually be at play. What is it that people want, right? And that's, it's up to every leader to understand that. What is it that, that people want? I did a, a presentation for a major group, the Business Council in New York State. And I got their attention by talking about two F words. And <laughs> the right two, there, you've got a, all our listeners' attention. Whoop, and now you're leaning in. The Which ones words, are they? <laughs> what what do people really want, especially at work? What do people want? Flexibility. Tell me I can do my job any way I want to. Just tell me what the outcome is. And freedom. Tell me you see me as a human and that I'm actually free to be expressively me. And, and in that way, I can do the work and I can do even more than the work uh, if I'm free to be more me and you've got to be able to be in the position as a leader to say i see that i see you i see that you know we're making some guideline changes there it will be hybrid we were fully remote we're going hybrid we are going to want to have you in the office one to two days a week which two are you going to want that's like well that's not freedom there's a it's in selecting the two days that you want exactly because yeah. it's like you still work for a company, right? Yeah. There's still honestly, right. There's always that operational, and I think that's where a lot of employees get frustrated in this new world of work. And I'm hearing it a lot from some of my ex-government colleagues, where they've been mandated to be back in the office three days a week, and and unfortunately that flexibility has not been applied in terms of choose your days or necessarily. Maybe it is applied in some but it's not consistently applied across the board, right? And so there's a lot of frustration and resentment building and we're seeing actually a really high exodus of employees because they feel like they have no freedom. But at the end of the day, if we have clients walking in, come on, we need to operationally have some bodies here to help these folks. So out. here's where the breakdown is as a leader, right? Where we're seeing the exodus is where we're seeing bad leadership. And sorry, dear leaders, but the mirror's on you. Hold it up and take a look. That's the person that's responsible. If you've said, you know, it is it is policy and you're going to roll up a newspaper and beat them with it because it's policy, you're not going to get a great response. If you go, you know, the vision of our organization, the vision of our organization is that we provide the most outstanding customer service experience and that is something I, as the leader of this organization, live into. And that is something as a team member, I need you to be here so that we can provide that. Now we're all moving towards the same thing rather than you do it because I said so, right? Yes, 100% yes. And, and even I'm going to plus one that as well. Please. Before you get to the, before you get to the, and I need you, it's, you know, have them think about that last time that a client was really impacted by the services we get show that that we've given them we've provided and and then show them that you'd realize you had a hand in that right and you do realize that the only way we can maintain that level of service is by having some people on site 
So get them invested in that end outcome exactly to get their right. buy-in instead of coming in as that command and control, right? It's that's that coach and empowerment where there's so much, so much to be done in terms of equipping managers, leaders, supervisors, however they're they're named in your organization, in equipping them with the training to have those coaching conversations all the while maintaining operational requirements for sure. It is well for said. it is 450 here my time presently which means we went way over my normal rule of thumb of 30 minutes which doesn't surprise me because we could I did not touch one of the questions. I have to for those who are watching and those who are listening, I had a beautiful list of questions. You and do. It, it's and, a beautiful and, list. Is it? <laughs> and do you know how many I asked you? I don't zero, zero awesome. which is fine because i love the wisdom that you did impart i wanted to know more about your tedx's if people want to watch them or connect with you or find out more about dr p or start following you how do they do that dr p thank you yeah i am proud of the tedx i will just say one of them is called how a parallax perspective disrupts perceptual bias it is a really fancy long term way of saying <laughs> If you look at something differently, deliberately, you're going to see something different about the context and even the other person, maybe even yourself. So the one assumption that I invite people to make in that TEDx is make just one assumption, and that is that you aren't seeing the big picture, the all of the picture. You're missing something about the context. You're missing something about the other person. You're missing something about your own blinders, your own blind spots. And so make the assumption that before you jump to judgment that you should, you can really jump to uh, curiosity. What am I missing? Love it. And then I did an Oxford talk that talks about a culture of caring and it talks about how to, how to actually just really truly connect with people. We're so used to, Hey, how are you? Oh, that's good. See ya. Instead of, I see you dear human. I see you dear human. So I would invite the audience to please Google me, Google my name, Wayne Purnell or Dr. Wayne Purnell, P-E-R-N-E-L-L, Dr. Wayne Purnell. You can reach me also at either dynamicleader.com or waynepurnell.com and look up exponential success. I've got this summit coming up. So take a look at all the happy things that are going on in the Wayne Purnell world. I have a blog, free blog every Wednesday. You'll get Wednesdays with Wayne. And I have a free masterclass called uh, the Powerful Presence Masterclass. Both of those are accessible on waynepurnell.com. Purnell with an E, folks. Remember that. P-E-R-N-E-L-L. Yep. Amazing. Sounds like there are several ways they can continue to hear from you and, and learn from this wisdom that you imparted even today. And I'm sure through all these different mediums, if there was one final nugget of wisdom that you could offer our listeners, what would that be? There are so many. Really, the the main thing is, you know, I, I do have in, in exponential success, I do talk about having values, building your vision, and then bringing the vitality so that you're living it. And the main thing is to really get clear. Clarity is everything. Get clear on what you want. Dare to desire. Dare to step into that place of, I do deserve. And so it's really about the, the this bring, comes down to the single nugget of get real with yourself about yourself and recognize that you are worthy and you are lovable. Love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you, Dr. P. Thank you for my joining pleasure. us. It, is, it truly is my pleasure. It, it always is a pleasure. I think I would just have you as a guest for the rest of this, you know, podcast uh, journey of mine, just <laughs> in, in week two in Dr. Noah, <laughs> maybe for the future, folks. I'm happy to come back at some point. <laughs> awesome. And just call on me. Absolutely. So thank you, uh, Dr. P. And thank you, listeners. Uh, if you have any questions or comments relevant to this episode, please don't be shy to mark them down in the comments and make sure that you do subscribe and follow so that you're getting notifications for all of our upcoming episodes. And thank you. And hoping that you would have gotten one or two people powered solutions from today's episode. 
Well, folks, thanks for joining us for yet another enriching conversation. To hear more about today's guests, make sure to check out the links in the description of this episode. Want to continue the conversation? Then head on over to our social media platforms, all of which are also linked in the description to keep it going. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss another valuable episode.